Imagine a world millions of years in the future. A world where evolution has written a new chapter in the story of life. The world is inhabited by very strange creatures, like nothing the Earth has ever seen. Five million years in the future. This is Europe, but nothing seems familiar. The Atlantic coast of France is buried under ice sheets over a kilometer thick. The familiar animals have also disappeared. Instead, creatures we wouldn't recognize are roaming across the icy wilderness. These are shag rats, and at the end of the long winter, they migrate to the edge of the ice sheets looking for grazing. Shag rats are about a meter high. They stay together in big herds, partly as protection against the cold and partly against predators that hunt in this bleak landscape. This is how Northern Europe will look in a future ice age. Throughout an ice age, the ice sheets retreat and advance in a pattern. In the future, they will return again and again, grinding their way down from the poles, reaching as far south in Europe as Paris. South of the ice sheets, most of the rest of Europe has become frozen tundra, and the orchards and vineyards have long gone. It's hard to survive in such a bleak, cold landscape. But life hangs on. And more than that, some creatures thrive here, especially those that can live on these tough, cold-adapted shrubs. These herds have to cover large distances each day to find these sparse patches of grazing. But the biggest problem in surviving when the Ice Age returns is how quickly the climate changes, making it hard for evolution to keep up. Animals that do survive Ice Ages tend to develop a number of features in common. They have long fur, obviously, and plenty of fat to keep warm. They tend to have chunky body forms. They tend to have small ears, short tails, and short legs. On this barren landscape, we have a large herbivore. It's a shag rat. It's a rodent, it's evolved from an animal like a marmot, it lives in groups of about a dozen animals, they survive the cold conditions by huddling together for warmth, they have thick fat, short legs, all adaptations survive in cold climates. The ancestors of shag rats were creatures like marmots. Today, they live on the cold high mountain pastures of Europe. Marmots are rodents, and rodents are nature's great survivors. They're versatile. They can eat just about anything and live just about anywhere. And rodents breed very quickly, allowing evolution to keep up as the climate changes. And as Europe was plunged into a new ice age, these Shagrat ancestors found ways to fend off the bitter cold. 
One way to survive in a cold climate is to get bigger, reducing the surface area relative to volume, which means less body heat is lost. Shagrats stand three times taller than their ancestors, the marmots. They also have a specially worn shaggy coat made up of two layers of fur. A dense underfur traps a layer of warm air next to the body as insulation, and long, waterproof guard hairs keep this fur dry. These guard hairs are hollow, and the air inside provides extra insulation. So the shagrat is doubly insulated against the worst of the Ice Age winters. At the edge of the ice sheet, the temperature can plunge to minus 60 degrees, and sudden blizzards seem to come from nowhere, sweeping across the tundra. Instead of hibernating like their marmot ancestors, the shagrats stay active all winter, traveling long distances through the snow in their search for food. Winds of 80 kilometers an hour whip up the dry snow into a total whiteout. In just a few minutes, a storm can reduce visibility to zero. Now the shagrats are in real danger. Not from the blizzard, powerful, stocky shagrats can survive much worse than this, but from a predator, a snow stalker, that uses the snowstorm as a cover, stalking close to the herd. If a shagrat gets tired, ill, or weak, and falls behind the others, it's in serious trouble. The shagrat is only wounded, but the snowstalker doesn't risk injury by trying to finish it off. There's no rush. It simply trails its victim and waits until the shagrat bleeds to death. The snowstalker belongs to a family of vicious predators. They are the mustelids, the weasel family. And the largest is the wolverine. The wolverine is an all-round scavenger and predator. It'll eat anything it can find and kill. So wolverines are more likely than many to survive and adapt to the coming ice age. To hunt and kill prey larger than themselves, snowstalkers are bigger and heavier than their wolverine ancestors. But they attack their victims by a method that's been used before in previous ice ages, razor sharp, saber teeth. Previously, some of the cats have evolved sabre teeth and they use them to kill their prey in a similar way. The sabre toothed cats would attack big prey even up to the size of a mammoth and inflict severe injuries on them and let them die from their wounds. This is the first time that another group of carnivores had evolved sabre teeth. Snowstalkers also have hairy soles to their feet to insulate them from the cold and give them some grip on the slippery ice. As long as there are shag rats on the snowfields, the snowstalkers have a good supply of meat. They're normally solitary, but this is a female. And as well as finding enough to eat herself, she has to take food to her cubs. Her 
Her den is in a shallow cave, the only shelter she can find in this bleak landscape. Even at this age, the cubs are ferocious and competitive. But they're growing fast, and to give them enough to eat, their mother has to move on, searching for more food. She'll travel tens of kilometers from the den, even as far as what was once the French coast. Here, glaciers, once confined to the mountaintops, now reach down to the sea. For only a few brief summer months, the sea and the beaches are free of ice. And then it's worth the long walk for the snow stalker. There's the possibility of food on the beach. Gannet whales, three meter long, ungainly looking creatures are lolling on the shingle. Despite their size, they're actually birds, evolved from gannets. Gannets are very common seabirds. In the northern hemisphere, they tend to live in co large colonies, often on sea cliffs. They're active predators chasing fish. Now, many birds chase fish, but the gannet is unusual because it dives into the water and then swims underwater with its wings. It's a bit of a compromise. It's got to be into their bodies when underwater, turning them into makeshift flippers. It works, but not very well. The gannet whale has given up flying completely, so its wings can evolve just for swimming, like flippers on a sea lion or penguin. So it can travel at high speed underwater. And to steer, its feet have become rudders. Gannet whales now live in the same way as the big marine mammals once did. But that couldn't happen if marine mammals were still around. So what happened to them? In today's seas, there are whales of all shapes and sizes. Large baleen whales, like these humpbacks, catch enormous quantities of tiny food from the water sitting plankton and small fish through huge plates in the sides of their mouths. And smaller, toothed whales, like dolphins, chase and catch individual fish. They use concentrated sound beams to locate fish, and perhaps even use sound to stun them. But whales and dolphins have one thing in common. These are animals which today are extraordinarily vulnerable to human interference. They're being affected by climate change, by excessive fishing, habitat change, pollution. A whole range of threats, but it seems almost impossible for these animals to survive more than a few tens of thousands of years into the future. By five million years time, all the marine mammals will have become extinct. Now that's bad news for the marine mammals, but it's good news for other animals which might be able to evolve into those niches. The niches which are left free are wide open for birds like the gannet whale to exploit. Gannet whales took the place of the smaller toothed whales, using their long serrated bills to catch fish. But there's still a big difference between dolphins and gannet whales. The major feature of marine mammals is that they give birth to live young, and that by doing that, they're able to complete most, if not all, of their life cycle in water. Whales and dolphins never need to come onto land. 
birds, this is different. Birds lay eggs, and eggs can't be dealt with in water. So every summer, the gannet whales leave the water and haul themselves onto the beach. There, they lay and incubate a large, single egg. The problem is it's a large bird. That means it's got a long time in which it hatches the egg and then subsequently raises the young up to the stage where the young can fend for itself. And that takes time and takes a complicated life cycle. We can see similar things in many modern birds. Albatrosses and penguins have to face exactly the same problems. At the end of the long, dark winter, the chicks hatch the sea to bring back food for the growing chick. In the future, the gannet whale also cradles its egg on its large, upturned feet. During the summer breeding season, the feet themselves have a rich blood supply, which keeps them warm and, in turn, warms the huge egg. But an egg this big would make a perfect meal for a snow stalker. Snow stalkers have a very keen sense of smell and can find food from some distance away. So gannet whales always haul up in groups for defense. It'll be hard to get past those powerful beaks as long as the gannet whales stay close together. The snow stalker won't give up easily. Persistent snow stalker, gannet whales have a second line of defense. <laughs> Vomiting up a disgusting, foul smelling mixture of partly digested fish and squid. Just too much for the snow stalker's sensitive nose. Summer is short, cold and bleak near the edge of the great European ice sheet. There are only a few brief summer months when the shag rats can graze on fresh green vegetation without digging through snow. In five million years' time, the plants and insects living in what was once France and Germany will be similar to those that today live north of the Arctic Circle. But summer is all too short, and autumn brings the return of the freezing weather. The mother snowstalker has brought her two cubs out of the den and has to teach them how to survive on their own. 
mother has to train her young how to hunt. It's difficult, it's risky. So you might see two or three animals hunting together. That's a mother training her offspring. And she'll show the offspring how to run, inflict the injuries on these shag rats, then back off and wait for the animal to die. The mother watches the youngsters struggling to bring down the shag rat. But eventually, she shows them how it's done. If she teaches them well, they'll stand a chance of surviving their first Ice Age winter. Now the temperature plummets to minus 70 degrees, and the vegetation is buried under meters of snow. This is the hardest time for the Shagrat herds. They migrate south as far as they can go, but the weather won't improve much, and they'll be followed every step of the way by snowstalkers. In five million years' time, the return of the Ice Age is a serious challenge to life. Many of today's familiar creatures have gone, unable to keep up with the changing climate. But life is resilient, and evolution has responded to the challenge with new creatures at home in this icy wilderness.